still in the middle of game one over here where you see Frank Lepore on your right hand side a uh, board full of planeswalkers Harry Corbis has just resolved a large Sphinx's revelation yeah you think that's enough planeswalkers I think he needs a fourth he may need all of them I mean uh, against a, a person who's just drawn 10 cards <laughs> <laughs> that's fair uh, does Harry have access to anything like uh, planar cleansing or uh, faded retribution, anything of that nature? No, no big sweeper and no elixir of immortality as well. So okay. he's playing on a, a straightforward game here, game one. Fair. So if Harry is going to answer these planeswalkers, he's actually going to have to do it card for card. Um, having, of course, as you just said, he just drew 10. So uh, not necessarily unreasonable to expect him to just slam a bunch of detention spheres here. Now, a big edge that Harry has in this matchup is no counter spells out of Frank's list. True. Uh, too busy presenting threats, yeah, as the savior intended, I think. But yeah, not a, not a lot of reactivity here, other than uh, a little bit of trickiness in the, in the form of three Advent in the Worm and a one of Cyclonic Rift. But keep in mind here, Harry, the way his list is set up here, he does have to win, and it can't be by decking. He has no elixir, so True. he's going to have to find a way to slog through all these planeswalkers. Yeah, and this is one of the toughest spots for uh, a, a Sphinx's Revelation deck. When you are down in game one and you kind of feel it slipping away, like the realization that you you actually have to win two now. Uh, a lot of times these decks are, are in a position where they can can win game one and then can there's enough time left not, or enough time knocked off the clock they can kind of cruise the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry def definitely does not have that luxury. Is going to have to win the next two matches. Um, I guess I shouldn't write him off just yet. Uh, this game not over by any means. No, he's still slogging away here. You see a couple of meter ball attacks to try to keep Frank's Kiora and Jace Architect thought off of going ultimate and Elspeth to follow up here. That's going to be plus. Yeah, the, the Jace is very, very close to ultimate, uh, as is a Johnny, actually. Uh, this is not a matchup where 100 life is particularly relevant, though. I mean, it could end up being relevant if, if Harry has no way to win except buy through damage that's fair although here comes a big rev from frank yeah that is big uh harry could win by decking after all this looks like a rev for just four or five here okay leaving up enough mana to well harry is tapped out here so it may just be an issue of him going to be discarding a hand size anyway potentially okay um i would think that if you are if you're leaving up mana, the idea is so that you can cast something in particular that you're digging to find. Uh, leaving up five, um, so yeah, so was this on Harry's end step? This is all on Harry's end step okay. here. You see an advent here to follow up. And okay. Frank untapping with a loaded hand here, Cyclonic Rift, Elspeth amongst his cards. He's gonna take a big untap. Yeah. This is my kind of Sphinx's revelation here. Uh, ordinarily, of course, the Sphinx's Revelation, some of the most important cards in both players' decks, they're heavily contested. Uh, I, do, I love it when players just slam Sphinx's Revelations back and forth. Yep. So you see, Ajani's going to plus on the Advent. That's going to allow the Advent to freely attack and kill Elspeth. A couple pluses here from Jason Kiora. And that's just the beginning of Harry of uh, Frank's <laughs> turn here, as you see, a course yeah. of Crufix. It's like, all right, we have, we have done all of our Planeswalker upkeep. Now it's time to cast spells. <laughs> and decide which of my 12 cards I get to keep. Another land here from Frank. So we, we saw, I saw a Cyclonic Rift as we passed through. Um, I saw an Elspeth as well, actually. So uh, a little surprising that he's not going to choose to cast that. I guess he, is, he, he has access to another Sphinx's Revelation, so he can fire that off if, if he feels the need. So passes the turn back with a bunch of men up. The Tension Sphere, the draw for Harry. That's big. Um, Harry needs about seven of those right now. <laughs> but, uh, but the first one's a start. So and here, the real question is, what's the, the most important target here? Uh, Jace is, is actually about to ultimate. So my inclination is you have to kill Jace. Yeah, I mean, there's one Aetherling in, in Harry's list. Uh -huh. So that seems very hard for Harry to beat from this spot. True. But yeah, it would strike me as a priority to keep Jace off of the ultimate. Sure. Well, of course, if Frank uh, ultimates Jace and fishes out Harry's Aetherling, yeah. th that's not actually that good. 
Uh, oh, sure. He, he, like, fr Frank can't actually blink out Harry's Aether Link, or else he would, just, he would just give it back to Harry. But so Harry can then no longer, uh, once that Aether Link's gone, oh, sure. he's out of ways to win the, the game. That, the game, yeah, he actually just doesn't have a win condition there. And then Ajani can also just gain 100, and now Frank's at 140 life. And can only win with Mutavolts. Yeah, and like one Elspeth or something. Right. <laughs> so it looks like Harry's going to start the turn off here with a Detention Sphere. And... Yeah, a lot of juicy targets here. So he's going to go with the Kiora. Actually, yeah, the Kiora also threatening yeah, the ultimate here. Sure. So uh, I guess Kiora is the, the more frightening ultimate. They're both pretty scary. And I keep think. in mind, Frank still has Cyclonic Rift here in his hand, yeah. too, which can reset all of these Detention Spheres and Banishing Lights as well. True, true. Yeah, we see uh, up at the top of the screen there a, a Banishing Light that I believe has another Jace under it. I'm not sure about that. So that's a pretty sweet play. Uh, Ultimate Jace immediately unlock the other one. Sure. It's not bad. Yeah. All right. Looks like Harry is getting ready to fire up some Muta Vaults here. No, another Banishing Light. OK. Like I said, need seven. Yep. Um, he has six in his list. Yeah. So, but well, uh, honestly, six would probably do it here. I, I'm, I'm, I may exaggerate a little. Uh, needs five, really, yep. and uh, has found two. All right, so that Banshee only takes care of the Jace. Now Frank just down to his Ajani and his Worm. And a ton of cards in his hand. Yeah, uh, just an Ajani and an 8-8 Worm. That's that's not the worst spot to be in. Okay, of course, you can't discount Corsair of Crufix either. Although Harry can overpower that stuff. I mean, that's still... True, true. So Frank here going to take a big untap. Elspeth in hand, he's going to plus Ajani. Three counters onto the Courser. Now, Frank also, Fr Frank has some uh, Oblivion Ring effects in his deck as well. He has access to two Banishing Light and three Detention Spheres. So uh, he can actually just unlock his, his Planeswalkers on a one-for-one -one basis as well. All right, so here comes the attack from Frank here. He's got his 5-7 Courser, his 8-8 Advent token. Azorius Charm is going to handle the token. All right, so Harry weathering the storm pretty effectively here. Um, Although, of course, as, as we can see, there's plenty more coming, unless uh, Harry can, can successfully fight over the Sphinx's revelation. So we'll see right now if Harry wants to chump block. And he says, no, I'll take it. Yeah, the difference between 18 and 13 uh, in this matchup is relatively minor. And here's a Jace Architect of Thought post-combat. Okay, so that, that is going to... Stimmy any aggression from Harry. Uh, turn off those tokens again. Harry may have been uh, kind of thinking in terms of, like, well, I don't want to give up a token here because I can use it to uh, pressure the Ajani, or uh, yeah, you have to start attacking Frank at some point. Yep. So uh, giving up those tokens uh, seems, re it seems like a much bigger price to pay when you there's not a Jason play. So Frank here trying to determine whether or not he wants any sort of follow-up here. Such a stacked hand. Yep. He can't cast this Elspeth. He's thumbing in Ajani as well, mm -hmm. though I can't imagine him casting that. He has, yeah, he has used the Ajani this turn, right? So, okay, can't, can't ultimate and then cast. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine he would want to do that regardless. And here's a banishing light from Frank. Okay, so this would... Likely unlock Kiora. Kiora seems like a safe bet. See momentarily what this is targeting. Yeah, there'd be, of course, no reason to unlock Jace when they're, when you have already cast one from your hand. So uh, I wasn't completely positive that that's what that, uh, that top uh, Vanishing Light was hiding, but it actually is. We can see that now. And if you look at the clock in the middle of the screen here, we're looking at, we're, we're hitting 17 minutes here. Uh, both of these players have to be concerned now. If, they, if they're yeah. not the one that wins game one, it's going to be really hard for them to even get a draw. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Harry may have been in uh, time to scoop it up for clock reasons territory. Um, honestly, he may have been in that, in that territory from the moment we switched to this match, which is a, a bizarre thing to say <laughs> when, when we actually switched to him resolving a revelation for 10. Yeah. So... Cure is unlocked. The turn is passed back to Harry. 
take a peek. Um, if you spot Harry an Aetherling, just right now, just uh, he draws it, resolves it. Uh, how is that good enough here? Like, is, does that turn the game around? So next turn, Frank can go ahead and gain. I think that he can probably still win against 140 life in time. <laughs> Eight. It's, no, I, I, no, I, I love that. I just love that. That's a real statement that we get to make. I don't know. It's like it's over 15 turns because eight times 15 is 120. Right. So I, I would be surprised if there were 15 cards left in his deck. That's that's a real concern too. Yeah. There's still Elspeth. There's random mutavolts. Maybe there's other other tools here, but sure. Uh, not sure that those are actually. Uh, gonna get the job done. And, and as long as Kiora's in play, that actually blanks uh, Aetherling as well. Right. So you see two mutable attacks here. That's gonna knock Kiora down to one. And Frank's hand still totally stacked. And keep in mind, he also has a Cyclonic Rift in his hand as a pretty big insurance policy in case something weird happens. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, Harry can only answer these Planeswalkers by locking them under enchantments. So. Um, Cyclonic like Rift can bump them all into play, although really just for a turn. Yep. So Frank here casting a Sylvan Caritid. He's plussing all of his Planeswalkers. Johnny mm -hmm. now up to nine. Yeah, you know, we see life totals. The one thing we, we don't see are library sizes. Uh, I think there's a there's a strong possibility that Harry's actual game plan at this point is just to, to deck Frank the natural way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Frank has had an Ajani in play for a couple turns. He's, he's had Jace, it looks like several Jaces in play over the course of this game. Um, he's, he's resolved at least one Sphinx's Revelation that we've seen. There's a, a good chance that um, that Harry's ahead on cards and just wants to stay alive. Yeah, and looking at a, a, a quick check there, it looked like Harry is a little bit ahead right now. It looks like he's getting ready to revelate, and I'm sure it's not for an amount that's going to cause him to fall behind yep. here. Uh, likely going to revelate for the exact amount um, that would give him the win by one card. All right, so here's the revelation in a turn here from Harry. Five cards. Yeah, I just assumed that Harry had gone through way more of his deck at this stage of the game, but it looks like it's actually Frank who's revelated far more. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to think that. Like, Sphinx's revelation is not the, not the only uh, w way to dig through your deck in chunks in Frank's deck. You yeah. Know? Like, keeping those Planeswalkers in play for any length of time is going to thin your deck out pretty substantially. So a uh, big untap here from Harry. And this is a scary spot for Harry because, uh, you know, he knows this is his game plan. Once you've committed to this, you cannot draw a card. Yeah. Uh, you, you get your, your card for the turn on your draw step. You've rationed those out exactly. And if, if that gas is not enough to get you there, you're done. So Harry has picked up a Dissolve, among other cards here, from his Revelation. Yeah, and of course, this is not just, you know, finding gas to stay alive. This is finding gas to deal with uh, what was it, three five fives and three Planeswalkers right now, or two five fives. but... So there is a Supreme Verdict clearing away Frank's Sylvan Caritid and Corsair of Crufix. Yep, that's step one. And... Tapped one Mutavault in the process. I believe that Mutavault is turned off by Kiora currently. But it has access to two other Mutavaults and sends them both at Kiora, uh, likely playing around something like a Zorius Charm. Oh, Jace plus last turn. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah. And now here is Aetherling. So a huge turn from Harry. Clearing up everything, doing some work on the Planeswalkers, and now Aetherling's in play. Okay. Um, yeah, so Frank... Of course, you were doing the math thing, like, like how, how long does it take an Aetherling to deal 140? Yeah. Frank's still at 40. Uh, he's, he's obviously, he's got the seal of gain 100 kind of just sitting on the board there. Can ultimate his Johnny at any time, but um, has to actually make that commitment now if he, if he wants to do it, because Aetherling doesn't take that long to deal 40. And there it is, Frank now going up to 140 nice. life. Nice. This broke our clock, <laughs> la or our tracker last time it came up. Yeah, I was actually, uh, yeah, I didn't actually think that we had fixed it yet. I wasn't sure if we had or not, but. Here's Supreme Verdict from Frank. Harry is simply going to blink out his Aetherling. All right. So Frank uh, actually at 140 there. Yep. And now with Dissolve no longer on the table, Harry's tapped too low. That gives Frank an opportunity to resolve Elspeth's son's champion. 
Well, some tokens for you momentarily. <laughs> yeah, Frank Steck not going to run out of Planeswalkers anytime soon. And there's a plus from Jace. This, uh, this replacement, Jace, actually getting pretty close to ultimate territory. Although at this stage in the game, it's not clear what that even gets him. Yeah, there's just more reactive cards, more planeswalkers. The Aetherling, of course, Harry has in play. Mm -hmm. So not a lot left. Yeah, if he ultimates Jace here, he can fetch out uh, a Banishing Light or an Attention Sphere to... That's a pretty strong play, actually, to uh, it, go digging for a Banishing Light, uh, hit the Detention Sphere that is keeping Kiora locked down, and then uh, plus Kiora targeting the Aetherling. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you can, if you can shut off Aetherling that way, you're in fine shape. Uh, so here comes an activation here from Aetherling. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Harry has so many options. Uh, of course, if Aetherling is going to actually close the game out uh we know it takes over 15 turns yeah uh we we don't know for sure but we're pretty sure uh harry's deck does not have 15 cards at this point pretty positive yeah. i mean from the count that it looked like harry was doing there it looked yeah. like there was maybe 15 cards 20 cards left in the player's deck right, right before he revs okay. so so Averling, uh strictly on uh on anti-planeswalker duty here so and yeah. Now that uh, Harry has committed to the mana here, here comes the Cyclonic Rift again, forcing Frank to blink out potentially. And Harry's going to consider countering this, it looks like. Hmm. All right, so adding some mana here. Got some options for sure. Is this another rev? I can't imagine. Yeah, I don't think that, as we've said, we're, we're pretty sure that Revelation actually just ends the game. Oh, of course, think of it. Yeah. yeah. Was, what, what other reason would there be to count out a bunch of plans? Like, Revelation, that doesn't sound right. But yeah, Syncopate would do it. All right, so that allows Aetheling to take care of the Elspeth, and one, another one of Frank's Planeswalkers is down. Mm -hmm. Harry sitting at a relatively comfortable 20, 23, so uh, Ajani likely going to tick up and... Uh, put some counters on some tokens here. All right, so here is a, a plus from Ajani. That's going to turn the soldiers into two twos. And here comes an attack from Frank. And we see that, that Frank actually uh, found another Ajani. I am curious if there's an argument uh, there for actually playing the second Ajani and uh, making your soldiers into three threes there. Um, because of library sizes, I doubt that Frank actually wants to use the other plus one on a Johnny at any point. Correct. Sounds correct to me. Yeah. There's an argument for that. And it would actually, uh, it would force Harry to use the, well, actually, on this next turn, uh, Harry has to attack Jace. And he's not yeah. going to kill it. So um, we suspect, if, we're, if you're Frank, you have to suspect that Harry's uh, Aetherling is tied up for at least the next two turns. Uh, dealing with Jace. So here's a temple here from Harry. Maybe you want to keep the Ajani as backup because you assume that at some point that Aetheling's going to take care of the Ajani. Okay, that, you're right. Uh, you, you, you have to kind of look at each Planeswalker as uh, as a combat step. Yeah. As, you know, you're going to have to waste mana and waste attacks uh, with your Aetheling to deal with this Planeswalker, and then this Planeswalker, and then this one. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Ajani currently in play is one, uh, an Ajani replacing it would still just be one attack step. Uh, yeah, and we just got an update. Harry with 12 cards left in his deck. Frank with 11. Okay. So Harry needs to stay alive for, for 12 turns. Yeah. That's the, that's the goal here. And again, Frank has gone ultimate with a Johnny life total at 140. Mm -hmm. This game is tense. Uh, and yeah, I think as... You know, at, we, when we went to this match, we said, well, these players really need to be thinking about the clock. They need to finish three games. I think both players are very much on uh, on the one-game match mode here. And we might not even get through one game. No, I... Well, 11 cards, not that many. Um, I, I would guess that we'll get through one, but uh, I guess it's, not, we're, it's certainly no guarantee. Yeah, these are some tough turns and some tough end steps, though. They really are. All right, so Harry goes up. Looks like he's firing all of his Muta Vaults up here. Okay, so actually gets 
some extra damage there. Uh, so it doesn't just have Aetheling to work with. So with his Mutavaults, he can actually finish off Jace and a Johnny in one swing, it looks like. Although he's gonna leave one Mutavault back. Well, Jace is still plus here, so. Right. So uh, he can deal seven total with uh, seven total with Aetherling, one with one of the Mutavaults to, to finish it off. Yeah. And then he could have sent the other two Mutavaults at a Johnny. Oh yeah, yeah. With, by only animating two, he's short. Yeah. He could have theoretically fired them all up. So here comes the attack. And it looks like he is going to deal with Jace. I believe they were all going at Jace. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there he is, again, trying to play around a potential uh, form of interaction. Uh, hasn't seen Azorius Charm all game, of course, because there aren't any in Frank's deck. But uh, that, that's totally a card that you could imagine seeing one of, two of, uh, especially in a deck like Frank's that seems stretched pretty thin in terms of like what it can find room for. Yeah, you could easily see one or two copies. Sure. Yeah. And here is a Jace from Harry post-combat. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, cannot use the minus two on this. Uh, <laughs> loses the game as soon as he takes it down. Can't kill Frank by damage, and again, one card ahead on Library. That's his path to victory here. You see Aetheling phase out here at the end of the turn. Comes back in, now Frank on taps. And Frank is... Yeah, Frank has three tokens. They are two twos currently. They would be one twos if they attacked. Um, Frank and then, of course, I activate a Johnny to make them three threes. He could play another Johnny after that and make them four fours if he really wanted to. Um, so there's some urgency uh, on Frank's side to get this chase off the board quickly, although. Less urgency, really. Normally, you're concerned about Jace because it's a source of card advantage. Um, I could see an argument for just ignoring it here, actually. Yeah. So Frank here, again, trying to figure out if there's some way for him to win in time. You see the clock there. Under four minutes at this point, and this is almost certainly just a one-game match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not... We, we, we are not finishing a game. We're, we're not even starting a game two at this point, I don't think. All right, Frank tries to resolve an Elspeth. Harry says that's fine. All right. Now, the Ajani, not, not an anthem, you know, can only grow three tokens at a time. So those extra tokens, not actually that significant. I could see them here, actually, uh, the the minus ability on Elspeth, just to clear out Aetherling for a turn. Although, hey, never mind. <laughs> I just realized why that won't work. All right, so there is the plus. Ajani pluses as well. Let's see how the counters get distributed. Looks like one more going on to the original pump. So now Frank with three three threes in play and three one ones. Mm -hmm. So Frank has to figure out how to deal 17 damage uh, in what is now nine turns, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right, so Harry picking up the pace a little bit, starts off the turn by animating Aetherling going at the Elspeth, pumps to take it down. So just three tokens. Uh, six mana, make three tokens. Chase pluses again, and now here's a detention sphere. That's huge if it resolves. Yep, and there, go, there goes all the tokens. So the board is stable. You see the clock there. A little over two minutes to go. Yeah, now Harry, uh, you're right, basically has to just get uh, enough turns to pass in two minutes, I think. Yep. So passes the turn back to Frank. Frank's going to take a draw. It is a detention sphere of his own. Okay. And that's a, that, that's a card that certainly has some juicy targets here. Remember, he can also still plus his, his Ajani. There is a risk there, of course, that the decking is the way this game plays yes. out. Every, every time you activate Ajani, you lose a turn that you are allowed to stay alive here, basically. So the Ten Engine Sphere, that gets met by Dissolve. Yeah, Frank has the option of plusing Ajani for gas. He actually also has the option of casting Sphinx's Revelation for gas, although that's... Uh, that's a very, very risky situation. Doesn't find anything, and likely wrapped up the turn, though. Yep. Harry's going to check and see. I, like, likely reviewing what card types that Johnny can and can't find there. Or if the reveal is mandatory. Oh, sure. Or if it's mandatory for Frank to take something here. Okay. And now you see Harry just trying to, uh, try to win the game in time. He's not even going to bother to attack Frank again at 140 life. Sure. Uh, yeah, literally can't win with damage. Um, Harry has eight 
combat steps left before he decks himself and can only deal 80 in that sense, or can only deal, what, 64 in that All right. time. You see a temple there from Frank, and looks like both these players are just passing the turn back. Okay. And this uh, is looking good for Harry. Uh, I don't know the actual numbers here, but... And keep in mind, next turn, that ultimate with Jace gets another card out of Frank's deck, too. True, true. It's like a time walk, basically. <laughs> Another of, one. Yeah, of, of all the, the sweet things that ultimating a Jace can do. Yep. And Harry's going to consider things. Yep. Players in the standard open. That is time. Man, Active presumably has a, a rules question of some sort the judge is uh, confirming. All right. Players, and now we see the Jace ultimate here. All right. So we can see one, two, three, four, seven cards. Way too many. Yeah. And it looks like we're going to be looking at a draw here momentarily. Uh -huh. So takes a look at the... Uh, Harry takes, takes a look at what is left in Frank's deck. Um, yeah. This is not a game that he can win. I don't think there are any other ways uh, for him to actually get cards out of Frank's deck. And the rare... It looks like we're looking at the rare 001 draw, unless there was some addition of time made as the, the players were getting over to the feature match and that, area? That's, that's actually totally possible. This uh, this round clock coincided with the actual uh, round clock of the tournament. By about uh, 10 seconds, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, it is not uncommon at all for there to be a uh, a, a time extension yeah. of, of a few minutes for feature matches. But it appears but the clock was up to date. We're on, time, we're on turn two here, and it does not look like Harry can win the game here, either by decking and certainly not by damage. Again, Frank went ultimate with that Ajani numerous turns ago. And the players in, in engaged in discussion here. I think uh, both both kind of realize the futility of continuing to play. I mean, and, and a draw here is still very valuable for Frank. Right. Yeah. This is the awkward thing here. Um, a, a lot of times you'll you'll see a discussion like, "Well, I, I'm clearly winning. Like, would you like to concede to me or something like that?" Yeah. Uh, in this case. Uh, there's no shame in, in just saying no to that. Well, there's no shame in, in saying no, period, at any, in right. any situation. But the match played out to its natural conclusion. Yes. Nothing, nothing left to be said about it than yes. that. Uh, but, but as you said, in this case, actually, a draw, uh, you know, a loss actually removes Frank from top eight contention. A draw does not. Yeah. So no incentive at all for him to concede here. Going to go ultimate with Ajani again, go up to there 240 life, and now the perfect 001 conclusion here. Perfect. All right. Frank Lavora and Harry Corvesi draw zero games to zero. Both players now <laughs> X1 and 1, still in a potential position to win and in the next two rounds. Keep in mind that we're on the low side of 10 rounds here. We only had about 460 players. Mm -hmm. And so X1 and 1, especially this deep in tournament, should be good to go. Yeah.